Welcome to this video on the brain. I'm so excited to talk to you about the brain today. As you can see, the brain is the largest and most complex group of nervous tissue in the body. It can be classified in several ways. Our textbook associates the cerebrum with two lateral ventricles, the diencephalon with the third ventricle, and the brainstem and cerebellum with the fourth ventricle. Ventricles are cavities in the brain filled with fluid, specifically cerebrospinal fluid. Now, when we look at the brain, there are four distinct parts. The cerebrum, which is the topmost part of the brain, and we can look at it in terms of the hemispheres and the cerebral cortex. The diencephalon, which is made up of the hypothalamus and thalamus, which is associated with the third ventricle. The cerebellum, which is this part I'm pointing at here that looks like a cauliflower at the back and the brainstem, which is made up of three distinct structures, including the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. When we talk about ventricles, you can see on the diagrams here, where we see the blue, this is where the ventricles are located, and therefore where cerebrospinal fluid flows. If we look at this view of the brain, we can actually see where the Two sides of the brain are connected here through the corpus callosum, the band of white tissue. Now remember, white matter is long myelinated axons organized into tracks. And right under it, so here we can see where we are pointing at the corpus callosum right here. And underneath we can see the lateral ventricles. Then underneath here we have the third ventricle. We can also see it really clearly in this diagram of the brain where those cavities are where we would have the fluid. So those are the two lateral ventricles and here we have the third ventricle. Because this is cut from the frontal view, we cannot see the fourth ventricle. Please note, however, that you can see gray matter on the outside of the brain and that's showing the cerebral cortex, a thin layer of gray matter of the cerebrum. We can also see right here the longitudinal fissure which, cut, which cuts the cerebral hemisphere into two parts. Here we now have a view from the top of the brain where we can see the longitudinal fissure right here cutting the cerebrum into the two cerebral hemispheres. You can also see in this diagram of the brain here how the cerebrum is on the top and because it's see-through we can see the location of the thalamus and hypothalamus and then the midbrain and the pons and the medulla oblongata as well as the cerebellum. Here we can see a view of the brain including the four lobes of the brain. When we talk about lobes we are looking at the different areas in the cerebrum and the cerebral hemispheres, but specifically in the cerebral cortex. So this yellow area here is the frontal lobe and there are many different areas in the frontal lobe. Then this purple area here is the parietal lobe. At the back here we have the occipital lobe and then on the side at the temples we have the temporal lobe. Each of the lobes, as you can see, is responsible for different areas. Primary areas are, uh, primary sensory areas, excuse me, are areas where we receive sensory input. If it's somatosensory, we'd receive the sense of touch. If it's a visual area, then it's the sense of sight. If it's an auditory area, then it's the sense of sound. If it's, um, if it's other areas, it's those senses. And so you can see all of the areas will have a primary sensory area where we are receiving sensory input, but you will also notice that there are association areas and those areas are areas where we will associate information that we are getting with what we already know. So the primary visual area, for example, will receive the sense of sight, but the visual association area will associate that with what we already know, with what we've already seen, our visual memories. And you can see that any association area will perform integration for the particular sense that it is dealing with. 
We also have motor areas, which you can see in the frontal lobe especially, and those motor areas will initiate motor output as well as refine motor movements. This is just another view of the four lobes of the brain. Now here we can see the brain inside of the skull and the layer of the meninges around it in that blue right along there. And then you can see the convolutions of the brain, so how the brain has folded over itself. You can see the corpus callosum right here. And remember, the corpus callosum is going to bridge the two cerebral hemispheres. It will allow them to communicate. Again, as we move through, you can see where the thalamus is and the hypothalamus. You can also see hanging off of the hypothalamus the pituitary gland, which is the master gland. It is not a part of the nervous system, but a part of the endocrine system. And this is the view of the brain that we will be using from our modules. 